If you guys have been on social media at all in the last 72 hours, you have absolutely heard the name Gabby Petito. Um, I mean, this is such a fast paced case. I swear every single hour new information is coming out. And unfortunately the FBI did just release a statement, um, literally like 10 minutes ago saying that they did find Gabby's body. Um, I filmed this video prior to knowing that. Um, I still think the video is helpful because it lays out everything that we know at the moment, um, but things are constantly changing every single hour. So make sure to be checking the description box for more information, any updates on the case, because this is crazy. So this is what we know so far. So 22 year old Gabby Petito, she is missing. She's been missing for 19 days now. She moved from Blue Point, Long Island to Florida in 2019 to live with her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie, who is now her fiance. So on July 2nd, they decided they were going to embark on a cross-country journey in a white van and they were just gonna vlog their experiences. They have a YouTube channel together and it's honestly really cute. The only problem is that on September 1st, Brian came home with Gabby's white van and Gabby didn't show up. And this was 10 days prior to Gabby's family noticing that she went missing and filing a missing persons report. So everyone is asking, where is Gabby? Like it is all over the news, it is everywhere. Where is Gabby? But the issue is, is the one person who may have the answer completely went silent so basically whenever Brian came back and people started suspecting like where is Gabby he immediately lawyered up which he is totally in the right to do that you have the right to remain silent you have the right to hide whatever it is because anything that you say and do will and can be used against you in the court of law so I totally get that but at the same time if you're saying that this person is the love of your life and you want to marry them and they went missing and they've been missing for 19 days and you know nothing, you would be, I wouldn't even care at that point. Like, yes, I'd probably get a lawyer just in case, but I would also be out there searching for her because it's been 19 days. And the longer that these cases go on, the less and less likely we are going to be finding her alive. So as of right now, he is labeled a person of interest, but he is not a suspect quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and just give you guys a timeline. I think it's just so much easier to understand whenever you guys can see it on a grid. So on August 25th, basically, this was the last time that her and her family FaceTimed. She FaceTimed with them, said that they were leaving Grand Teton and they were heading to Yellowstone National Park. This was also the very last day that she was active on social media. On August 29th, her parents received a text from her saying, poor service in Yosemite, which they thought that was a little bit weird because Yosemite is not where she was headed. She was heading to Yellowstone National Park. So maybe that was a typo because I do believe that they get mixed up every so often or was someone trying to throw them off the trail. September 1st, Brian comes home with Gabby's van and Gabby is nowhere to be found. September 11th was when Gabby was officially reported missing. Now, since this case has gotten so much media attention, a lot more pieces are coming out. So for example, on August 12th, uh, there was actually a police video that surfaced from a fight that Gabby and Brian had. I have been fighting all morning and, and he wouldn't let me in the car before. And Why wouldn't I, he let you in the car? Because you had OCD? Told me I need to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> she just gets worked up sometimes and I try and really distance myself from her so like I, I lock the car and I walk away from her. Police okay. examined laundry for injuries they could see on his face and hands. I got the scratches on your eye. The phone. The phone. So you push her and she hit you? She was, I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't like a push and she jumped on me. She was, she was already, she was already, I don't know what, she was already swinging and I was pushing. What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was, what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me something. So you can see from the footage that Brian definitely had a couple scratches on his face. What we also learned from that video is that Gabby had obsessive compulsive disorder and an anxiety disorder. The police demanded that they slept in two different areas, so they went ahead and got Brian a hotel room for the night. Now, a little side note for you guys. Um, I mean, investigators don't believe that this is linked at all, but I think it's really helpful just to mention there was actually a murder of two women in Moab, Utah at the exact same time that Gabby and Brian were there. And one thing that I personally find a little weird is one of the women actually worked at the Moonflower Co-op, which is where the police were called about Gabby and Brian's fight. So like I said, investigators don't believe that that is linked, but I do think it's really important to mention because what are the odds? Okay, so what is going on right now? There's a lot happening all at once, so I'm gonna fill you in. So basically the very first thing is that the police do have Gabby's white van and they have Brian's cell phone. So they're searching the van right now to find anything suspicious. And as of right now, they haven't found anything. Another weird thing is a TikTok just went viral of a girl saying that she actually picked up Brian hitchhiking on August 29th. I'm gonna go ahead and play that video right here. On August 29th, my boyfriend and I picked up Brian 
at Grand Teton National Park. Before he came in the car, he offered to pay us like $200. That was kind of weird. He then told us he's been camping for multiple days without his fiance, he did say he had a fiance, and that she was working on their social media page back at their van. In conversation, I brought up, yep, like we're going to Jackson. Um, he freaked out. He's like, nope, I need to get out right now. Um, you know, like pull over. He kind of like hurried out of the car and then he's like, okay, I'm just gonna go find someone else to, you know, hitchhike. And we're like, okay. He had like scruff, um, but he didn't look dirty. For someone who was camping for multiple days, like he didn't look dirty, he didn't smell dirty. Now keep in mind, August 29th was the exact same day that Gabby sent her parents that weird text message that said, poor service in Yosemite, which is really weird if they were in Grand Teton. And just when you think that this case cannot get any crazier, I promise you, it's about to, because now Brian is missing. So basically the whole thing is just absolutely crazy because I guess Brian went to the Carlton Reserve um, on Tuesday and he never came back, which I think is really weird because his car is still at his parents' house, so how did he get there? But then also, like I said, he's just been missing since Tuesday, and so right now they are trying to find him. He is now officially a missing person. Um, he's also a person of interest, so they are really trying to find him right now, but the Carlton Reserve has 25,000 acres of land, so the whole thing is just crazy. He doesn't have a cell phone. The whole thing is just an absolute, like, literally an absolute mess. And then Gabby's lawyer has came forward and is like, no, he's not missing, he's hiding. Like, there's the difference. Like, Gabby is missing. Brian is not missing, he's hiding, Gabby is missing. So as of right now, they are trying to find him at the Carlton Reserve, and then they are, there are organized searches in and around Grand Teton National Park for Gabby. They're asking that if anyone knows anything or has seen anything or heard anything to please come forward. I will have all of that information right here. And they're asking that if anyone knows anything or has seen anything or literally has any piece of information that could be helpful to please call this number right here. It is 1-800-CALL-FBI. Um, if you guys know anything, please give that number a call. I'm going to be continuing to um, follow this case, but in the meantime, leave your comments down below. What do you guys think happened?